I'm here with Donnie Banks, third generation owner of the oldest motorcycle shop in the United States of America, 10 different franchises, and it all started right here originally. Yeah, this guy was Lloyd Newbern. He started it in 1918. Shortly thereafter, my granddad bought it. His name's Jack Banks. He was Delta employee number three for uh, my grandmother, Betha Banks, and my dad, Don Banks, to have something to do. This is one of the earliest uh, Coke machines that we had at one of the original locations, five cents. Honey, what do you got here? This is uh, one of the old cash registers that they had, and I think the first day, my dad said they did like 12 cents worth of business. That was a lot of, mo lot of money back in the day, right? A lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Won't get you even a bottle of soda today. Maybe a set of pedals. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Guys, I had a long conversation with Donnie this morning about a lot of his accomplishments. He's a former world champion. ATV and ATC racer, multiple AMA championships. I asked him, how many championships have you won? He doesn't even know. Uh, he, and he did, never really kept track of that. It was more about the fun going out, the, the accomplishment of it. And I said, well, where's your world championship trophy? And he goes, I don't know, because he doesn't have a museum here. But if you look around, there's some really cool pieces like this. There's the Macon Hall of Fame, but um, Macon Georgia Hall of Fame. And uh, Loretta, he, second at Loretta's to uh, Tedder, Matt Tedder. The, the, the hanging on to the accomplishments was, wasn't really a, a big thing because Donnie's humble, but it's amazing what he's accomplished. I mean, mo most guys, you, you may have heard of um, Paradise Raceway. He, Donnie actually bought and built that track at, at one point and it actually sold it to the Plessingers. You might, Aaron Plessinger might ring a bell. He almost won the, the uh, Supercross this weekend. Yeah. Crashed on the last lap. Sorry about that, Aaron. Heartbreaker. Man, we, I think we all had tears in our eyes on that one. But Donnie has a long history in the sport of promoting. Tell us about some of the promoting accomplishments. Well, th this was, we had a track called Itchy County Off-Road Park in addition to Paradise. And we had ATV Nationals there. And the they used to have a People's Choice Award where they voted Best Promoter of the Year. And me being an ATV racer, I'd always wanted to do the best job for the ATV guys. So they uh, they voted me promoter of the year four years. Oh, okay. D Donnie's, Donnie's still racing. Matter of fact, I met him at Daytona. Uh, was it two weeks ago? Yeah. And two or three weeks ago. Let, me, let me show you what he was racing. Let's take a walk. Over 40 years ago, Donnie started racing these things. And he's still racing them. I think the bike needs no introduction. The, 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 the sound of that thing just makes a hair stand up my arms. What a beautiful machine. You've been racing these since 1981 on the original air cool 450, then the 480 and the 500, and now the liquid cool. Here we are 42 years later. You're hucking the triple at the Daytona Supercross at 65 I've had, years old. I've had everyone. I'll be 65 in August. 64. Okay. 64. Hold on. Yeah. Date, date you uh, yet. But, I, I um, wanted to be 65 because then I would, could race the uh, old guys instead of the young 60 plusers, you know? Yeah, those guys are a little aggressive, huh? Yeah. I want to get out of the sunlight so they can get a better view of it. But yeah. man, what a beautiful piece. I talked to your mechanic yesterday. He said he went through the whole motor, uh, set the compression up the way you liked it so yeah. that. Uh, it made it uh, a little easier to start with the decompression release. Um, you've been racing for, since how old, how old were you when you started racing? I was probably close to 16. Um, it was 73, I think was my first race on an SL125. So when you're 66, that'll be 50 years of racing, yeah. right? Yeah. So Donnie, you're coming up on 50 years of racing motocross at a very high level, winning multiple nationals. We went over your injuries later. I don't know if we'll do that now, but there's been multiple. Um, and then here you are at Daytona, Ricky Carmichael, sitting on your 500 here i saw the video what's the scoop with with, with, with this obsession well I've, I've been trying to quit racing for a while now and my uh my wife and my mom keep pushing me to keep it up because they think i enjoy it i guess i think after one of your serious injuries i'm pretty sure i think it was your daughter you rode a 500 and she said you had a huge smile on your face like you hadn't in a long time like you do now yeah. there's nothing like the adrenaline rush of riding a big bar two stroke oh, yeah. it's better than coffee in the morning better than any drug and if someone asked me if i had one motorcycle that i could keep it would be a big bore two stroke or a big bore four stroke like an xr 650r or something it's just so much fun riding you can't explain it and, and that's that's why that's why this business has been here for 100 plus years uh, literally, and uh, the oldest motorcycle dealership in the country, and that's why you're still out there racing at, at a high level at tracks like Daytona against yes. the fastest 
um, I could say, I guess old guys, uh, you're 60 plus, right? So the fastest old guys in the country. And unfortunately, sometimes we forget we're, we're like we're not that we're over 50 and we ride a little over our heads and get hurt. But it's so much fun. We keep going back to it. About your dealership, Donnie. This is really remarkable. Um, we have a gas gas dealership at home, and it's a lot of work maintaining. Tiffany, line three. Tiffany, line three. Just one dealership. You've got ten. You got Indian, Slingshot, Polaris, Kawasaki, Suzuki, Yamaha, Honda, Husqvarna, KTM, Gas Gas, and you're stocked to the gills. You've got every factory edition known to man in there, which uh, most dealerships don't even have one. Um, and you've been here for over a hundred years, established in 1918. Pretty remarkable. How, how do you yeah. keep it all straight with 10 different lines to, to run? I got a lot of good help out there. That's what it is? Yep, yeah. It take, it take, I mean, because a lot of times I'm racing or doing whatever I'm doing, so I got good babysitters in there to help me out. Yeah, and, and kick-ass mechanics and uh, yep. guys like Marco, who I know from yep. New England, who came down here to work with you yep. because of your reputation. Yep. Um, it, you, dude, I guess you, Dude, we, we got almost 50 employees. Yeah, you so you need to have 50 with that many dealerships, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, and got... Probably sold uh, 1,800 plus units last year. That's so, incredible. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but uh, like you got to have good people surrounding you to do that. I was here last night, and I said I'll, I'll be the last one to leave uh, with whoever's the last one here. And I, I can't say that I'm surprised to see, but I was impressed. Your dad yep. was in there mopping floors and cleaning. He was moving uh, floor mats and cleaning underneath them, which most people wouldn't think of doing it. And the dealership nine dealerships, years old. How old? Eighty nine. Eighty nine. Yep. And he's in good shape, and he's yep. in there kicking butt. Didn't he just have surgery like recently? Yeah, he just had a, a piece of cancer removed from his nose. But yeah. It, when when was that? Uh, Monday. Monday. Okay. On his day off. <laughs> on, yeah, he did on his day off. So he would miss a day of work. And, and I heard uh, that also your your dad is uh, thought you have a five day work week. Oh yeah, he wants to open up on. My, he's here every Monday when we're closed. Whether, whether you're open or closed, he's yeah. here. But he was here till after seven last night, cleaning and organizing. And, and you could I talked to him briefly. You can tell his love and passion part line two, part for, line two. for the sport runs yeah. deep. You know. Oh yeah. He was born into it too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So Donnie, here we are, a lifetime invested in the sport. Started racing one. Seventy three was the first race on an SL one twenty five blue. And you've got some cool classic bikes in there too. You got a Christmas special and uh, yep. CR sixty and some uh, not a huge collection of vintage bikes because you said this isn't a museum. It is a business, but yeah. um, what's it been like? Uh, what, what, how do you keep the passion going after all these years? Dude, it's just fun. If you if you do it, you know it's it's it's, it's nothing that you can explain. It's just uh, there's nothing like it. I played semi pro football and and nothing uh, relates to fun just like riding a motorcycle and winning. I accidentally won my first race on a flat track and it's like, dude, winning is even more fun than racing. And you won quite a few after that, didn't you? Yep. So you raced ATCs, ATVs, motocross, uh, pretty yep. much. Uh, what other types of two-wheel and three-wheel racing? Uh, ice race, flat track a few times. Um, never really road racing, was going to road race, but uh, had to borrow some leathers. And, and, you know, my legs are so long that uh, the leathers came up to about halfway up my calf. So How, how tall are you? Uh, uh, well, I'm six one now. I used to be six four, almost six five, but I'm you know steadily shrinking. So at six five, that's almost a foot taller than what most of these bikes are designed for, right? Yeah. Aren't they the average? They're all designed for Ricky Carmichael size guys that are like, yeah. well, how, how tall is Ricky? Like for five? Jackies. Yeah, jockeys about yeah. as tall. <laughs> so uh, Brian Villapoto on those guys. So um, two tall Bill was about the only big tall guy. He's the only one around. taller than you. That yeah. could be an advantage though when you're leaning back over the rear fender oh, yeah. and through the sand well, and in the rough stuff. You yeah, know, I got plenty of room for the bike to move around. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So uh, if you were to do it over, what would you do anything different? Dude, I'm, I, I ask that a lot of times, and uh, with all the injuries, you wouldn't do it again. I'd I do everything exactly the same. I don't regret any of it. Uh, I know I know. you broke seven ribs, broke your shoulder, broke both arms, broke your wrists, uh, broke recently uh, nine surgeries on your knee uh, yep. in a racing accident, knee replacement, uh, broke, what else? Did I miss it? Did Ankle. I miss it? Ankle? No. Uh, broke three bones in my neck in Japan. Um, fingers, just, just about everything. You gave you giving Robbie and Evil Knievel a run for their money. I think. Yeah. Um, did you ever think of quitting after any of those injuries? Well, I had to quit after the injuries, just but just briefly. Yeah, just briefly. Yeah. I, last, you don't look like you quit last weekend at Daytona. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I, 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 caught, I caught a little bit of grief for that one. 
Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, let's go inside and show them your dealership because it's absolutely incredible. Hey, check this out, guys. Donnie's got such a big dealership. The factory semis roll up, this time Suzuki with a full lineup. Well, those are all the brand new 23s, right? Yeah, yeah. the new uh, adventure bikes, the V-Strums, and uh, got a little bit of everything out there. That's awesome. So when is when is the event actually happening? Is it this weekend? Uh, tomorrow and Saturday. Tomorrow and Saturday? Yeah. And hey, maybe I'll hang out and ride some new Suzuki's. Uh, yeah. Come on down to Macon, Georgia. Check out Capital Cycle and uh, bring your bike for a ride. What's happening, fellas? Nice CB, nice CB 360T. What is this? A, what year is this one? It's a 75. Wow, that's nice. And that's a Z900 RS. It's supposed to look like a 76 KZ900. Yeah. What a beautiful piece. Did you buy that here? I, I actually didn't. I, uh, Don't tell Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> buy your next one here, right? Beautiful bike, man. I love the color. It has a very uh, classic yet uh, modern technology, but a classic look. Nice piece. How's it run? It's the best bike I've ever had, I'll say that. A little rocket chip? <laughs> yes. Cool. Yeah, definitely. It, it rips. Enjoy the ride. Guys, when I came here last night, the very first thing I filmed here, and the very first thing I was drooling over was this gorgeous Indian 50. Tell us a little bit about that thing. So I bought this thing used from a guy, a, a friend of mine. He, he used to ride it inside of his house. And I let my daughter, she learned to ride. She's actually 29 now. She was probably three when she was riding this thing. And I had an offer for it for several years ago for a bunch of money. And I told my wife, hey, I'm selling that bike. She said, no, if you ain't. So uh, we just cleaned it up and put it inside this thing. But that was Kristen's first bike. Your daughter, Kristen, is also um, the announcer for the AMA uh, Supercross, I mean, Arena Cross series, right, right? right? She announced the Arena Cross, and she got her start with Rob Bidos in the uh, Bagger League Racing. That's awesome. That's getting big right now. Yeah. The Bagger Racing League is yeah. uh, the it's next big thing with Harleys. In fact, you also have an Indian franchise now, too, and they build that race bike out of that motorcycle right there. They set it up to do 180, 200 miles an hour on the banks of Daytona. I've seen it myself in my own eyes last week. Now, lap times they're cutting it in, the, in this Bagger Racing League are faster than the 600s and only three seconds off the off the super bikes which is You're unbelievable that bike limited edition the, the race bike limited edition this year oh my god limited i gotta number, like, i gotta have one just <laughs> how much can yeah. i get one from you if they do come out yeah, we'll go look at it. <laughs> okay how they got i know they charge fifty thousand for the the, the flat, flat tracker, tracker. No, so this is going to be way up yeah yeah it's going to be really expensive probably yeah. one of the first six figure production indians yeah. Yeah, but what a machine much. they are awesome yeah. have you ever you that's the one thing you haven't done is road racing no, I, I, I went, I was going to go ride uh, Roblin Road, which is in Savannah, but the, the leathers that I borrowed, they, they came halfway up my leg, so I wasn't, back then you had to spend six, seven hundred dollars for a set of leathers, and I couldn't, I wasn't spending that just to go see if I liked it or not. I don't know so, if your wife would approve, but hey, if, if you want, uh, it's something I, I'd love to do, and I think it's a little easier on the body than hucking the triple on a CR500, right? Yeah, at least you can slide when you go down. <laughs> Absolutely. Instead of we'll, we'll see you at Daytona at school. So you stocked the whole lineup of the Indians. They got the full line of FTRs. They've got the slingshot. This is a special piece over here too, isn't it? This is a uh, Roush. Is yeah, it pronounced just, Roush? Yeah, just came in yesterday. Roush slingshot. Uh, most dealers are lucky to get even one uh, uh, of these. I heard you have two. Got two. Got the manual we just pulled off the truck yesterday. That's yeah. awesome. What a machine. Yep. And... Let's take a look at the dirt bikes because that's what you and our, uh, where, what our, where our heart's really at. Um, when I came through here last night, I was surprised to see not only one factory edition, th this uh, Gas Gas, but also the Husqvarna version, which I believe is over here, the Rockstar Energy one. You've also got the Kawasaki Monster Energy factory edition. You've got the Yamaha, and you've got the K you've got all five. In fact, and that's got Honda up front. In the Honda. <laughs> so, so you have every, guys, if you're looking to buy a bike, if you're from New England, call, call, call down here and ask for Marco. Uh, he used to be Chopper's mechanic in the uh, NESC race series. He's down here now. He's one of the sales guys. Give Marco a call. They'll hook you up with any of the new factory editions. They got them in stock. And then if you want one of the regular ones or a two-stroke, they've got rows and rows of Gas Gas, Kawasaki, Suzuki, Honda, Yamaha, KTM. Pretty much everything. Hey, and a catch y'all didn't know, this is Kickstart. Kickstart Kenny's? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, we, uh, if you were, if you, unless you live on a rock, you know that uh, under, 
under a rock. You know, Kenny Roxon went out and smoked the best riders in the world on this bike right here, this frame, and that those engine cases uh, two weeks ago, right? Yeah. That was that was kind of a my favorite race of the year because uh, if Barsha won, I would have been happy. Yeah. And my two and if Kent, he's been through so much with his uh, his career and to, to um, go back to his roots and, and win on that is just fantastic. Yeah. So as far as dirt bikes go, they've got a selection second to none here. The full lineup of Kawasaki's from little, uh, what's the smallest one, the 65, We've got I think? 65s, all the way up to the 450. Pit bikes, play bikes, and what's this one right here? This is a special this piece. Is, uh, this is built by a friend of mine, Mike Hamilton. Uh, he takes, it's got half an hour on it. He'll take a brand new bike and go spend several thousand dollars on it, and then he'll trade it on another one. Oh wow! I yeah. thought it was a, fa fact a factory edition uh, with two hundred and fifty. I didn't think they made one, but it's, that's it's what it looks a, like. It's a puff, puff special. <laughs> it's pretty badass. Mike Hamilton, yeah. And you've got uh, the little minis, the Husqvarna, the the KTM, the Gas Gas, the full lineup. Uh, e bikes are becoming a thing now too, right? Yeah, we sell a lot of those. Indian makes one now too, right? This hooligan. Yeah, and and Villapoto's got an X. Zero two, they're, they're coming out. They're, they should be on the way here. So I, yeah, I just talked to Rob the other yeah, day. I told him yeah. send me one. Me and Junior want to do some yeah, videos. Yeah. So Junior's Actually, really into these the electric bikes. They got, they got uh, four models. Is it, it looks similar to this, right? Yeah, they're half the price. Well, we're definitely going to look forward to getting one of those. And uh, like I said, Junior's been riding all the new electric bikes. We have the gas gas electric bikes. Do you have the gas gas electric bikes here? They're on the way. They're on the way? They're on the way. So this is a big deal right now, too. The side-by-sides, uh, this is a huge part of the industry now, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yes. It's, it's, it, the volume, the, the amount of money that these things are has just raised, you know. So we, by the time I took it over, it's a little over a million dollars now. It's a $30 million business, but mainly because of all this high dollar stuff. Wow. Yeah. yeah the, the, um, You've got the best ATV track in the world, literally two hours north of here, Durham. I went there and I told, I told Mike, the owner, I said, it'll take me three hours to home the whole place. Three days later, we left, and I only got half of it. It's, if you want to take a dirt bike or one of these side-by-sides, go to Durham Town and check it out. Yeah. So, and they have the work version. This is more like a, a, a work. Yeah, that's utility. Uh, utility, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and sport. So it's a, uh, like back when, back when. a special belt one that we did. Uh, oh my God, I saw this last night. Guys, what do you see this thing? This thing's off the hook. Portals, wheels. This is taller than most 4x4 Jeeps. Uh, can you stand in front of it just to give them an idea? You're, you're what, 6'3? I'm shrinking 6'1. It's, okay, it, and, the, and the, that thing's got to be almost 7.5 feet tall, maybe 8 feet. What, what is this? Uh, it's uh, R Max, Yamaha R Max. But we, uh, we installed different A-arms, portals, and uh, we put this kit on the front. And this thing is beautiful. Yeah. Now, I know I, I know a stock one of these is pushing 30 grand. What's a, what's a totally custom? close to 40. 40? Yeah. It looks like it. It looks, it looks pretty badass. Matt, they do a lot of mudding down here in, uh, yeah. in Georgia and in, in Alabama. They take these through the swamps and stuff, and this one will go just about anywhere. Wow. That's pretty badass. So you've got the full lineup of Cubs. Um, can we show them the Christmas special? That caught my yeah, eye. Yeah. This is probably, as we walk by, uh, they've got the, the Honda uh, Rebels. They've got the sport, the full line of Polaris 450, 570, 850, and the 1000 CC XP quad. And then, of course, up to the big monster turbo side-by-sides. But he's got a bike right here that um, set a new world record for the most money a mini bike had ever sold for at the Meekum auction. If you check the Meekum results about five years ago, do you remember the number that two of these sold for in the crate? Uh, 50 something thousand, wasn't it? Yeah, the, the, it sold for 42,000 five years ago, and it was like the shot heard around the world in the vintage motorcycle community. Like, why would anybody pay 42,000? And everybody was commenting, this guy's crazy. Why did, why did they pay so much for two of them? One just sold on Bring a Trailer for 25,500. Not at all surprised. So after. After those two sold for 42, he bought the guy, same guy, bought them back two yeah. years later, sold them for 52, like you said. So they went up 10,000 in three years. So this is like almost worth its weight in, well, if not gold and silver. <laughs> yeah, worth its weight in gold and silver. And I think it's because 
Well, it goes back to what we talked about earlier, the passion and the love for this sport because... It's so limited. It, yeah. Limited edition. Like yeah. the 500. Yep. Yeah. Very few of them left. And they only made they only made one per dealer, I think, or two per dealer. They came yeah. in a crate, so you get two. Two crate of two. And I don't think every dealer got one, only yeah. the more performing we dealers. We actually sold this one to a uh, local doctor. You sold this You sold this in 86? I sold new to a doctor, and his daughter didn't ride it, so I ended up with it back. And it's been up there, and people have been trying to buy it, but... For twenty five, it'd sell. Other than that, we just keep it. I, I heard the other day somebody offered ten grand. I thought I'll pay for it from yeah. here back. <laughs> that, I mean, stock seats or, or fuel tanks bring all the money. If, it's if, crazy. In eighty six, if you knew that this seven hundred ninety nine dollar mini bike would be worth twenty five grand, you probably would have filled the warehouse full. But it, it's the, um, I guess it's the exclusivity, the, the the rarity, the fact that most of them were destroyed by hyperactive kids like me that yeah. would get on one yeah. and ride the wheels off of it till it was dead. And you've got a mini trail, you've got a Trail 70. I know you said, you said this wasn't a museum, but th these are definitely museum pieces here. Um, yeah, what's crazy is this thing came with a stocking. It was like a piece of cardboard, and it had a stocking kit that came with it. Yeah. And I wish I knew where mine was at. I've never even seen one. Uh, I have heard of them. The, these Groms yeah. have become really popular, too. Yeah. There's like a uh, culture that's grown up around these. If you go to the Barber Motorsports Museum, they have a what they call small bore, small bore fest. Have you ever been to that? No, I haven't. Oh, it's been. incredible. Thousands of riders show up on these, and they set up tracks where they, they build them and make them like little road racers. And they have, of course, the the, uh, the, the motocross for the other minis. The new Naughties, the automatic. The, this is a hot new machine, too, huh? Honda's good at bringing out pet rocks, like the old ruckus. Yep. You know. My son, my son put twelve junior put twelve thousand miles on one of these in two years. He told me he was on the early release program from high school and used yeah. to show up at noon every day. Well, that was part of the reason he almost didn't graduate because there was no early release program. He was just leaving early. Yeah. But he put twelve thousand miles, so he got his license and never failed. These Hondas, I think that's one of the hallmarks of the Honda: the craftsmanship, the quality, the electrical integrity of them. They run forever. We 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 own a motorcycle museum. We own a motorcycle restoration shop. 21 guys full time all they do is restore bikes we pull these things out of barns yeah. that haven't started in 40 years I actually pulled out a CR125 out of a barn that had been in a barn for 10 years it had race fuel on it and it started on the fourth kick wow. which surprised me it was a former national champions bike but he leaned it against a wall in the bar he goes that started in 10 years I go, what kind of fuel and he goes VP I go, and we kicked it over and it started it ran not that good needed uh, air filter and everything but these things last forever these Metropolitans are designed to look like the vintage scooters but they're thoroughly modern and of course you know the the the, the race bikes are, are top shelf has, has honda been a, a cornerstone of your success oh, yeah. i would imagine yeah we're, we're honda dealer number four six eight so i don't know how many are older than us in the country but it's very few and um i mean i grew up on like i said my first bike i i, I remember getting the 58 mini trail the one that didn't have a headlight and I had it for a while. My first bike was like a Rupp, and then that Honda, I wish I had the 58 Honda yeah. Mini Trail that you know had white grips, white levers. What those, year was it? Was a real, I think, it, no, 68. 68, 68 Mini Trail, what yeah. color? Mine was red, red. tomato red. 68 Mini Trail. Instead of having the chrome. I'm only asked if I come across one. Silver. We come across a lot of them. If well, I come I, across I, one, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. One. You need to get it from them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you can't go wrong with Honda. And you've got their full lineup of, of uh, super bikes here. Yeah. Um, let me ask you a question. If you had one bike that to ride for off-road motocross, one for street and one for play riding, do you have one of each that, that sticks in your mind as that your favorite all-time motorcycle? Dude, I, Someone I, asked me I, last I, night I that same I question. I know. I can't say that because I'm, I'm going to hurt like, somebody's feelings. Yeah, okay. But right. I'll tell you one thing. Don't tell me what brand, but tell yeah. me, what, would it be a two-stroke or a four-stroke and uh, what size for motocross? Oh, motocross? Dude, I remember the the... Old Honda Elsinores back in the day, they were they were sweet. Um, so 125, 250, or 500? Uh, it'd probably be a 250, 500, dude. You just, they, they, they're fast, but you can't stop them. You know? How about for street riding? A street riding motor? Um, well, you, well, you don't say a brand, but what, I, I what would you a, prefer? V twin or? CB 1100. CB 1100. Really cool. yeah. 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 You can ride that cool. all day? I had a CX 500, like one of my first road bikes that my dad said you're not getting. So I got it and rode it to Panama City in about three hours i think how about so, for off-road enduros like that klr over there yeah what you ever ride enduros adventure yeah actually i've owned a klr i've had um africa twins um 890 adventure last year um the the tenere 700 is really good um christy I, Christina. this is my passion the the adventure bikes christy and i 
have access to like 400 motorcycles and our favorite for two up mostly street but some trail riding is what on it's just the most comfortable uh i have an 04 it's almost yeah. 20 years old we call it big black because it's all black and it's done up i got progressive suspension a pipe and everything but we bought it from a friend of ours needed a bunch of work and we fixed it all up and we fell in love with it and we ride we bring that to daytona and we'll put like 30 miles riding around the pits during the during the yeah, <laughs> we didn't bring it down this year. We made the mistake. I almost called my shipper. I bought a new, a new, brand new Gas Gas Seven Hundred down, which and, is an awesome bike. Yeah, it really is, but it's not for two up riding. Yeah, it, it, it has a gas cap on the rear that she ends up sitting on, so yeah. it's, it's not really very comfortable. <laughs> yeah, Junior Junior likes it, but it's a it's a much faster, better modern bike for just for, well, for putting around. And you can buy these for sixty nine hundred dollars. You can come down here to Capital Cycle and buy a brand new two thousand twenty three anything out there they're bulletproof yeah yeah there's videos of guys who've tried to destroy these i don't know if you saw the one that where the guy put it in the water uh with the um water above the engine cases it's one of the big youtubers huge youtube channel and he was trying to kill one and he couldn't kill it so he put it in the water and it actually fell over he came over the next morning and the only thing sticking out was a handlebar and he took it out and he filmed the whole thing he turned it upside down turned it over blew the water out of it and it started yeah i mean just i mean it, they are diesel for the military that's right yeah, yeah bikes and beers just did a video on that one yeah. uh, another youtuber but um yeah these are these uh, suzuki's are awesome are the super motos another hot product that you guys sell a lot of here yeah. down yeah. in macon matter of fact the sales manager just got a uh, the gas gas 700 super moto which is really good we have one of those too red yeah. with black uh, black forks black wheels it looks really the good. thing about the gas gas 700 which is the same as husqvarna 701 yeah. and the ktm 690 they're all the yeah. same virtually just different colors uh, maybe some small changes those things have 74 horsepower to put that in in, in a perspective you've got 30 on a klr oh, yeah. so it's not always about having 70 horse yeah. sometimes we want to putt around for putting around with your honey on the back the klr is great but if you want to race my son did a triple on a motocross track on a bone stock gas gas 700 went through the whoop section you're not going to do that on a klr no, but th th this is a cool little bike too a little yep. super moto 230 yep. Yep. that caught my eye too so one of your clients just pulled up outside with one of these 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 are this retro thing the things we liked when we were your kids have yep. become cool again haven't they yeah they're coming back this is a replica of what 76 uh, i think the paint job it looks like it's from that era, but it's... Uh, Last year, they even had it in the, in the burgundy and orange, you know, same color. That's awesome. Is that a production model? That's a production uh, Bombardier, right? This one here? k Yeah, we don't, we don't sell those new. We either traded them in or, you know, purchased them from us. KTM's getting into the, uh, the road racing now, huh? Moto America, uh, Grand Prix and all that. And out front... We haven't, now you said this has become a big part of your business now, right? Yep, side-by-sides are probably the biggest thing, biggest, probably the biggest segment that we have. Wow. We're out in their side-by section here. You've got the uh, Kawasaki Mules. These are, I see the National at the AMA Nationals. They run these, uh, the guys that run Southwick, the Johnsons, they run these exclusively. They're, and they run them hard oh, yeah. every day, year-round. The new, the new Mule. Like these, these are top end, the ranch editions. Yeah. They're, that's a platinum. These things are really nice, really smooth, really quiet. You know, uh, it looks like my King Ranch uh, Ford F 450, the interior is really nice. Yeah. Um, but they start with a base model like this. And yeah. Then, but we, we sell probably more utilities, but a lot of sport. And then down here on the end, we have. Uh, these are incredible with the long travel suspension, big knobbies. Yeah, unbelievable what they're doing. And then this this is a heated and cooled model. Wow. Uh, we call it a North Star. That is cool. Yeah. Air conditioning, you know, heat. I got to um, show that to Christy. She needs one of these. Yeah. <laughs> Further on the farm. We, we, we get a lot of snow up north, so this would be awesome. Yeah. She doesn't like the cold. That's got the, does it come right from the factory like this, or is this something yep, you just customize? Like that. Just like that. It looks like it would be the perfect four season. It has air conditioning too? Yep, air conditioning and heat. And it's a four passenger. Is it a four passenger? Yep, There's seats in the back? Is. This one is. They make it in a two passenger also. That's incredible. It's like a little, uh, um, little. it's almost like a mini truck. Yeah. Probably as much as a mini truck. Yeah, uh, I'm sure it's a. Uh, and then, you know, when a summertime comes. Yeah. Now, now you got a convertible. How cool is that? Get you some wind in there. They put stereos in this, these and everything, huh? Yep. Wow.
That thing's beautiful. Does the roof come off too to make it a convertible, or you, is that? You can take the roof off, but it's it's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, a true hard cab. It's amazing how far the industry's come. These didn't even exist back well, uh, in the seventies and eighties. Not really. Honda's in the game now too, huh? Oh yeah, Honda's got some really good. Honda's actually the only one that's got a gear driven transmission. The rest of them are belt drive. You know, Kawasaki, Yamaha. Um, Polaris, all of those are belt drive, and, and Honda's actually a gear driven. Unit. We we have a Yamaha Rhino that we've been beating the stuffing out of for I don't know probably eight years, and it's been just bulletproof. It's a little 450 four by four. Yeah, that's an old one. It, with it with a dump dump body. Yeah. We the guys use it at the shop, and they beat the stuffing out of it, and it just keeps running. And you got yeah, a whole lineup over. This Viking. Wow. Is so wide. The Armax is really cool. The one that we looked at, the Viking, is a three seater. It was the first answer because, you know. I've never seen one. I didn't even know this existed. Yeah. They have a three-seater side-by-side. This is side-by-side-by-side. Side-by-three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. side That's pretty cool. They have like a much more modern version of our Rhino. Yeah. Wow. And then uh, more of the Polaris. You guys don't have the pollen up north that we got, do you? No, not at all. There's, it's, everything's frozen up there still. That's why we're down here. We got to go home, though, I think this week. Is a Kawasaki Mule Pro. Is it, how many of these do you think you sell a year in total? Is this a pretty big part of your market? Say it again. How many of these uh, big side by sides a year do you sell of all the different brands? Uh, it's it's eighteen hundred total units a year. Wow. And I don't know how it breaks out, but the biggest dollars is definitely the side by sides, and probably the biggest total number of units. Wow, that's incredible. More than motorcycles, or, or, or no? Yes. Really? Yes. You sell more side by sides than motorcycles. Yes. Wow, yeah. I would have never guessed that. I'm glad and, I asked. And for a long time, ATVs was a big part of the market. Yeah. And then side by sides came along, and you know, it, it it took over the ATV sales. I think that would be, if I had to guess why, I would say, well, everybody on the planet drives a car sometime, but only five percent of the society drives a motorcycle, yeah. right? Or rides a motorcycle. So everybody. They're missing out. Yeah, of course they are, but because of fear or whatever, they think this is going to be easier, and, and so they, they buy these, right? They don't. Yeah. Th it's like buying a, a, an off-road car, right? And you can sit side by side and talk instead of a guy, two guys. Back in the day, you know, hey, jump on my three-wheeler and I'll take you to your hunting stand and now, yeah. so I'll, I'll sit beside you, I ain't getting behind. Yeah, no nuts to butts. <laughs> yeah. I, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm blown away. I had no idea that, that this was a bigger sale item than your than the quads. This is a beautiful piece right here. I had this is a Rubicon. This is Honda Rancher. I had a Rubicon 500 yeah. years ago. Yeah, it's it's, it's uh, just a little. Actually, the Rancher now is about the same size. We actually put the wheels on this one, but you know, the the Rubicon and uh, Foreman are a little bit bigger, and the Rancher's more or less the mid size. Probably our most popular side-by-side, side. I mean an ATV. Hey babe, I was thinking of buying you one of these to, to cruise around the national pits in, in our big rig. <laughs> would you rather have one of these or that, that, would you rather have, check out that Polaris over there with the cab on it. It's actually heated and air conditioned. Oh yeah? I, I, I think you might like that because it gets pretty cold up north, huh? And yeah. pretty hot down south. <laughs> Go hop it's in got, it and try it out, try it out, for, try, it out, try it out for size, <laughs> the door's open, tell me if you like it. Then you've got the, um, that's a Suzuki. Yep. So, this is what size is this rancher? Uh, four, 420. So, the Rubic is a Rubicon a step up from this? Or what's, yeah, what, yeah. what's the next it, model the, up? The next one's a Foreman, which is a 500, and then the uh, Rubicon used to be a 650. Yep. Yeah. I think it might be a 450. I don't know. So, we they also have wave runners here if you want something for the water. One if by land, two if by sea. Give Donnie Banks a call, he'll hook you right up. Donnie, you told me last night your dad said some inspiring things that lit a fire on you at a young age. What were they? Well, one of them was that third generations always fail. And uh, so I remember that to this day. But, um, you know, he, if it was up to him, we'd still be selling Honda only in downtown Macon. So it took me forever to get him to move out here. And I started adding brands, Kawasaki and all. And he kept bucking me and bucking me. And so right here, we, we first bought this 1.25 acres. And it had a ditch coming down the middle, so I might not say this on TV. We actually piped it, and uh, then I bought the land going out back and around back. And uh, so we, we had this building here, which was Ream Tool. We had it kind of encompassed, and then uh, when Mr. Ream died, he actually we ended up buying this property. So now we've got about almost six acres here on the 
Ninth thoroughfare at Mercy University in Megan. So it was almost like a reverse psychology thing, him telling you that, because it, he, he's told you that, and it lit a fire under your button. Obviously, right. 10 franchises later, uh, a massive dealership, huge sales numbers, and multiple national championship racing. I guess uh, uh, that that prophecy did not come true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of that cast yeah. very blood. It worked. It worked. That, 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 that reverse psychology worked on you. Yeah. So this, what's this building over here? This is our, uh, this is our service center, our shop. Um, we actually had to move it over here when we took on Indian, because they wanted more room. So we sent everything over here in this building. We got set up in storage in the back, and then our shop is up front. There's a brand new Ranger getting set up right there, doing a little test run. These are the guys making the magic happen back here. Doing a little up test run on this one. Nice. Have a little fun sometimes. Absolutely. That's the best part of the job, right? Oh, yeah. That's my favorite part. We got the setup techs over here setting up some brand new Hondas. Christmas came early for somebody. Got a brand new one coming down off the shelf to get set up. Christy and I camped out here last night. Uh, we got to head north today. Check this out. These are all brand new bikes. Waiting to, waiting to go to their new home. So if you're looking for a Husqvarna two-stroke, 50, 65, 85, 125s, 250s, 300s, you want a Honda or gas gas? I thought it was a Honda at first because of the same color as a blood red Honda. We don't even have these 50s yet. They got the 50, 65s, 85s, 125s, 250s, and 300s two-strokes. We sold out of these 200 two, these two-strokes two weeks after we got our first shipment. Junior sold every one of them. So wow! That bicycle came from the New York State Fair. You're kidding me. What 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 year was this? This is a bicycle, guys. If you, for especially you younger guys who've never probably seen one of these, these are single wheel bicycles. Is what that's what bicycles were back in the day, right? The that, big wheel bicycles. That one is the original. Wow! It came from the New York State Fair. What year? Uh, before me and you. Look at that thing. This this was this bike was built for the Olympic team. It was built by Swin. It's a nickel plated Swin Paramount. Look at that, huh? That's a serious collector's item right there. This is my sister's Stingray. Wow, from the 70s. I had we all had one of those when we were a kid, right? Yep. Banana seat choppers. Yeah. Schwinn. And then that's a classic. This this uh this is a Paramount twin bike. Whose little Yamaha is this? Um, that was Coleman Martin's bike that he raced at. Loretta's. Sure, it's not Roxon's. It's got yeah. Roxon's number. <laughs> Kickstart Kenny's fifty. Yeah, he's actually got a uh, Cobra around here somewhere that he actually won the championship. There it is, right there. Oh yeah, here it is. Who was it again? Coleman Martin. Coleman and Martin. My partner's son. So it's a championship uh, winning machine right here. Yep, at Loretta's. Wow. And he actually got a YouTube channel now. Very this, cool. This is one something. The original Honda sign from 1960, whatever, huh? Wow. H O N D A. I got a sign guy. You could actually uh, have a sign guy make an aluminum uh, case for yeah. it. Cause I bought a bunch of those for the museum we had redone. Yeah. And, then, and, and light them up with LED. We we also got a we 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 talked about Donnie's injuries. He's got one uh, at every location, I think. Um, after. Uh, Busting himself up like Evil Can Evil a dozen times, but that adrenaline rush is what, what uh, kept bought, keeps bringing him back. I guess. Look at all these K KOs, minis and quads and Honda 450. There's all the Kawasaki's. You had said in originally you guys sold bicycles back in the early 1900s, right? Yeah. Capital Cycle started as a bicycle dealership. This is Casey Cochran's bike. We, we set up five bikes and we had to ship oh, wow. him that motor. So Who's building the motor? Um, we sent it back to Husky. Oh, okay. So the factory's doing it? Yeah. I've been to their plant. The new plant is ridiculous. They spent like $50 million and it's their old plant. I went out last, about a year ago when Gas Gas Husky and KTM were in different buildings yeah. and they showed me the new building under construction. It's, have you been out there yet? Uh -huh. Oh, it's unbelievable. It was Taj Mahal. They have three, they have a glass, three glass enclosed dino rooms that probably cost a quarter million each. They're unbelievable. And, and they have nine bays enclosed for all their factory race rigs, the, uh, all, for all three brands. It's, it's unbelievable what they've accomplished. Back it's, in the day, Bill, my, uh, Bill's pipe, Bill Severo, 
he was like the only guy with a uh, dyno in California. He'd be Bill's there pipes. And Suzuki factory, mm -hmm. Honda factories, all of them would be coming to Bill's. You know, Suzuki and Kawasaki were all right being there together. When Honda come up, somebody else there, they going around the block. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want nobody to see anything. I, I know when when, uh, when I was in John's John Hines' office, I said, "Geez, now that you own Husqvarna, KTM, Gas Gas, wouldn't it be really cool if you guys podiumed the Supercross one, two, three? And he goes, "Come here," and he and he pointed on the wall, and there it was, one, two, three. They had already podium. I think it was last year the year before Husqvarna KTM gas gas first second third yeah so they're they're definitely on the gas no doubt about it yeah if this looks familiar uh this was the the rig that they ran the camera in at Daytona for the Supercross it'll be this year. also be at Atlanta this year that's awesome let's see what, is, what size is this one this is the uh R-Max that's a thousand right yeah uh, wow, look, look, look at all, look at us! You got an ocean of side by side. Hey, babe, now's your opportunity to try some out and, and uh, sit and want to pick one out if you want one for <laughs> our rhinos. Uh, sort of totaled. Had a little staff had a little accident on it with it, rolling it down the hill. Yeah, we'll walk up here. We got swing shots, which is uh, another big market. And you've got the land down here to ride them. Uh, places in like in Georgia, Durham town is just. Freaking! I never seen nothing like it. They got 150 miles of trails for side by sides. Just incredible! Wow, huge inventory. A little bit of everything. That's the uh, the, the Polaris. I gotta, Christy, come here for a second. Check this out. This is the North Star. What what's the spec on this? this is a thousand cc Donnie, or what is it? This is a thousand. Yep. It's got a fully enclosed glass cab. Heat and air conditioning it smells like a brand new car because it well, it kind of is, but uh, yeah, check it out, <laughs> comfy dual overhead cam, four wheel drive, fully enclosed cab, heat and AC. I believe it has a stereo too, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, these come standard with all kinds of features, basically, everything you get in a, in a Jeep, pretty much, right. This one's a little bit cheaper. It's got the roll-up. Okay. The other one is electric windows. Electric. Oh, you got to have electric windows in your side-by-side, yeah. -side, huh? Check it out. It's got suicide doors. They have, yes, they, have, um, they have these roll-up windows on this one, but the top-of-the-line one has electric. electric. This thing will pretty much go anywhere, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect for the snow or the beach or whatever. Look at this slingshot. That thing's bright. This is beautiful. Look at this Honda Pioneer 1000. Wow. Four, four, uh, four passenger, dual clutch transmission. These are the only ones that are gear drive, you had said, right? So they're basically bulletproof, right? Right, it's, it's no build. Slingshot, got a bunch of slingshots here, man. You've got that the Roush, and then how many of these slingshots do you have in stock? We probably have 10 or 15. We got a whole row of them over here. One, two, three, four, One, five, two, six. We don't even know how many we got. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Is that like asking you how many? A couple over there. It's probably a little less than twenty. Got the razors. Is this this is a new Honda? Which one is this? Well, this is a five. Oh, this one is a Pioneer five hundred. Huh. But the new one is a five twenty, um, which is just a little bit. It'll fit in the back of a pickup truck. The 520 actually has a box, you know, a bed instead of a, that dumps instead of a ride. I wonder if this would fit in the back of the mini truck. <laughs> it'll, it'll fit in the back of a full-size pickup truck. Pretty cool. This, this it's, it's a, it's a, it's sort of like a 80, but a step above. This is the you know, 500? Yeah. So now this they're. This is the smallest side-by-side. -side now they're a 520? Yeah, the new one's a 520 and it has a bed on the back. Basically the same size. Got some hopped up razors over here. Look at this thing. Wow. This thing is like something out of a dream, you know? <laughs> wow. This has got some really serious suspension on there. Walker, piggyback, gas shocks, winch cable. If you get this thing stuck, you're in some seriously deep mud. Look at this thing. Are those snorkels on the back? Yes. They are. So it breathes out of the top there. 
that's like that's like so a breeze seven and a half foot up in the air there I, I would say huge speakers this looks like a fun buggy for sure no wonder this has become such a big part of your business these are really cool going to moab you want the most kick-ass machine how about a turbo razor i i was out at the uh, sand mountain nevada and they these things are incredible i don't know how many horsepower they are but you can hear the turbo whine and i think the ones that were there were hopped up but they are even out of the box how many horsepower is one of these turbo razors putting down you'll have to ask Marco. probably more than most mortals need right <laughs> and then they actually put a slingshot motor in the new one enough to get you in trouble i'm sure I think this one Turbo. Right here has the same Look, motor that the slingshot. Shit, this thing's big. This thing's bigger, longer than a Jeep. Longer wheelbase. Look at the wheelbase on this thing. It's ridiculous. It's almost like a, it's, the wheelbase is longer than an F-150. Freaking unbelievable. This is the Pro-R Razor. Yeah, this one has the slingshot motor in it. These shocks look like, like, like two grand a piece. They look like very expensive shocks. Walker Evans racing. Well, I guess you need them if you got all that horsepower, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. You need good shots. You, you can't. Hard. You gotta have the good stuff. You can't use your legs to absorb the the, the triple on this one, right? It's that thing's as long as my leg. It, it's incredible the the level that they've taken these things too. Unbelievable. These are all the 2023 models. I assume brand new beauties. Yeah, wow. Turbocharged four seat razor. This one's got the Fox shocks on it. Look, look at look at these shocks, man. Like Donnie said, it's as long as your leg. That shock's three foot long easily. Freaking unbelievable. Pro XP with a serious off roader. How's it going today, Sean? Going fantastic. What are you working on? We're going on a Polaris Ranger student getting serviced up. Awesome, awesome. You do all uh, repairs and setup and everything else over here? Yes, sir. Awesome. How long have you been working here? About uh, six months. I heard you have the nicest toolbox here. Is that true? Yes, sir. Oh, my God. Look at this, huh? Hey, you're giving Lance Merton a run for his money. One of the guys that works with me has got a, the 100th anniversary snap on. Uh, it's 20 years old, but it's, it's about this size. That is massive. Thank you. Wow. This is really beautiful. Thank you. If you don't mind me asking, what's a toolbox like this cost? This is this is probably more than most people's cars, right? Yeah, probably close to thirty thousand. It is stunning. Well, how old are you? Twenty-eight. You're twenty-eight. You're a young man. When you're my age, when you're fifty-eight, Lance's toolbox is twenty-three years old. It looks brand new. You take care of this thing. Yes, sir. It'll. I, I have my toolbox that, that I got when I was sixteen. Still looks brand new. Keep it nice. Thirty years from now, it'll still look like a brand new thirty thousand dollars snap on. Yeah. I'll say whenever I die, you can just bury me in it. What are you working on now? Uh, so Polaris Ranger, but check out that's my Honda Helix right there. That is cool. I've ha I've I've done a couple of videos with these. I don't know if you've seen them, but I've had oh, a couple yeah. of these. I love this thing, man. I ride it every day. This is a is this a two fifty? It is. These things haul the mail. Most oh, yeah. people don't don't realize it's a scooter, but it'll do. What's the top speed on this one? I seventy five. That's with me on it. Is it is it hopped up or? No, bone stock. Bone stock. It'll probably run forever. These things are bulletproof. I love this thing, man. America. 120 miles every day. 120 miles a day. Every day. Do you know what it gets for fuel mileage? About close to 70. That's fantastic. You're passing the pumps, you're having a blast. Heck and yeah. you have really full body, almost full body protection with this. If you had a full face helmet on, yes, if sir. it rained, you'd probably stay dry as long as you keep moving at 55. Definitely. Very cool. That's yeah, a keeper. That. Wow, look at these knobbies. How you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. What are you building over here? Are you building a monster? Yes, sir. My goodness, look at this thing. Is this all aftermarket custom? Yeah, those are uh, four holes. Wow. What year is this rig? So 23. Brand new Ranger and someone's. Those tires look bigger than the, than the tires on most <laughs> most uh, full size trucks. How tall are those things? I believe they're 30, yeah, they're 35s. 35s. On a side by side. Oh my God, good job. Hey, what's your name? I'm Cameron. Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I was wondering who built that monster. That thing's beautiful. Yes, sir. I sure do appreciate it. A lot of tedious work that goes into this. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you love it. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here, right? Yes, sir. What a machine. Looks like uh, these look like they're made out of billet or something like that. Billet aluminum. Yes, sir. Very nice. Very nice. This is where they make the magic happen back here. Building all these monster ATVs and turbocharged 
rocket ships. This is an XP-1000 dual overhead cam, 2023 Polaris Ranger. This would be considered more of a utility one. It's sort. utility, but they jack it up for mud. And it's utility uh, sport now, right? Well, yeah, it, you know, mud's kind of a little different animal. You yeah. Get it up off the ground and, you know, you see it started at 22,000. It'll be all over 40 when it gets through. These are monster, monster knobs. By the way, if you've been to Durham Town in the past, they, they, these weren't allowed. Now, now they're allowed and they sell them there. So, and they have a mud section too. So, someone said they don't go to Durham Town because they don't allow these anymore. They, they do allow them and they encourage them. And there's more side by sides there than motorcycles, I think. Yeah. Which, you know, speaks to you saying that they're selling more of these than they are motorcycles. I think the fact that you can ride it four seasons with four people is something you can bring the whole family out on, you know? Or you buy a dirt bike, it's just for, for you. Especially with the air conditioning and the music, they'll stop, pull over, and drink a beer. And, yeah. You know. And for hunting, too. These are for hunting. See, this one has the uh, stereo up in the roof. Wow. And that looks like a really nice stereo, too. Is that something you guys sell here, the stereo, too? Yeah, we added that to it. Wow. So stereo, lift kit, all the goodies. Donnie, did you get your start back here? <laughs> I started with a broom. You know, in the shop, then I went to set up, and then I went to mechanic, and Daddy sent me to all the Honda schools, and they said, hey, I need your help up here in the front. So that's kind of how I ended up, now. I'm kind of babysitting everything. So really uh, uh, having that passion for it and understanding how the whole business works, that's another cornerstone of the success of the operation. You know, and seeing your, your, your dad out there till 7 o'clock cleaning in his showroom, uh, it's definitely a, a love for the, for the business and the passion for the cycling and ATVs. So... Um, what did Roger say? Roger told his young riders, you know, the best thing I can tell you is learn all you can learn about the bike. So that kind of starts with some mechanical knowledge. You know, and I like to quote Alvin Baker to, you know, racing. He says, A plus B equals results. A are the things you can control. B are the things you can't control. Don't worry about B, focus on A. Control the things, you know, work on the things that you can control. Huge Roger, Roger DeCoster, a fan. Uh, we got to meet him out at KTM last year. It's, it, and he started as a racer too, and now he's been running the most successful race team in the industry, I think. It's incredible seeing uh, guys like Aldo that have uh, dedicated their life to this business, sport, hobby, whatever you want to call it. So ironically, it was the Sierra 500 that bought me here to, to meet Donnie and uh, check out his facility. It's been an awesome, awesome day here. We actually got in last night and shot a bunch of videos, as you'll see. Check out our YouTube shorts. We've got some killer videos of the bikes he has here. If you're looking for an all-brand shop that'll hook you up and be here for the next generation, I can't think of a better place to go. Capital Cycle, Macon, Georgia. Look at this thing. My, my, my. Look at this. Brand new 2023. I haven't seen it in the sunlight yet. What's up with this paint job? This is beautiful, man. Is that, is that a metallic get, we blue? We get this price off there because we put almost. That <laughs> yeah, yeah. Half. No, leave that. Leave that price on there so when yeah, his wife sees yeah. it. Yeah, it was twenty-two thousand. <laughs> but uh, I imagine the wheels and tires, a lift kit, and this thing's got the LED. Those are LEDs, right? Yep. Top of the line LED lights, winch. It comes with a green handle screwdriver. It comes with a green handle snap-on screwdriver. Thirty thirty-five inch thirty-five inch tires, LED in the back. Look look at the. Man, the paint job's so nice in this, I don't know if I'd want to put it out in the mud. It's like, like a bass boat paint job. Killer stereo. So anything you want done, these guys will hook you up. Just give them a call at Capital Cycle, man. Check it out. That thing is badass. Can you stand next to that again? How tall are you? Uh, I don't know, like 5'8". And, and five. How, tall, what's it, how tall is this thing? Do you have you measured it? I don't know if it even fit in a closed trailer, would it? No, no. <laughs> you got to have a special trailer for it. You need a monster truck trailer for it. That's badass, man. How fast does one of these go? This is a 1,000, right? Yeah, 1,000. Uh, no. Those are standard cattle, dude. 60 plus. Yeah, 60 plus. Yeah. This one's slower because it's got a yeah, longer drive shaft. Yep. And the portals are a gear reduction, so I'm making it slower. Yeah. So we're pretty sure that Cameron could run over... Jonathan's the finance manager's LT1 with this rig. What do you think? If you stomp it? Yeah, yeah, I could get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he, he has good. Videos. He's the finance manager. He's got good insurance, yeah. right? 
<laughs> Let's see how it stacks up next to a full one ton four by four. Well, how about that? <laughs> That's a nice little pickup truck he's got over there, huh? It's actually, the wheels are, are substantially taller than this jacked up Z71. It's actually taller, the, the, the hood's taller. The wheelbase is a little bit shorter. But look, look, at, look at the size of the difference in the size of the tires. That's freaking awesome. I guess they're t this is called taking it to a whole nother level. It's about a foot taller than that full-size pickup truck. At least a foot. <laughs> wow. Donnie, what are you doing? I'm trying to learn how to do YouTube. You got you got your coach here yeah. with you today? I'm trying. My, my better half, Chrissy, is going to show him the ropes. Year old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you know a 15-year-old that knows iPhones, give Donnie Banks at Capital Cycle a call. We have a position <laughs> open here for YouTube. I got some great content. He's got. We were watching his footage drill. He's got some killer content. What is the name of your channel? Uh, I don't know yet. You know, it's got to be. How about uh, Donnie Donnie Banks, uh, um, Capital Cycle? Yep. Stay tuned. His channel will be up and running. We just helped him upload some killer footage with Ricky Carmichael and his daughter Kristen, and uh, who else? Taco. Taco. So stay tuned. The Donnie Banks channel is going to explode. YouTube Shorts. Thanks for watching, everybody. We had a great time here in Macon, Georgia. But I got to go back to Connecticut to the Great White North. I've been telling Junior I've been to come home for a couple weeks, so it's time to go. And I'm north. Thanks for watching, everybody. And God bless. United States of America and so Kira Honda for making these badass CR500s and somehow I convinced Donnie to sell, sell me that one so stay tuned we'll have we'll be doing some whole shots on that up north thanks for watching